In this video, we're going to take a look at one of my transcribed solos. It's something that many people on the YouTube channel have been asking for, so I took the time to play a solo over the tune Whisper Not by Benny Golson, and we're going to go through it line by line. I'm going to post a link to the sheet music at the end of the video so you can stick around for that. If you want to know why we're doing this, it's because it's important to understand the jazz language and put together some really great solos. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Just wanted to let you know that before we dive into it, if you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to have you just hit the little bell when you subscribe and we'll notify you of all the upcoming videos that we're making. All right, let's dive in right away and take a look at this transcribed solo. As you can see, the changes to Whisper Knot are written just above the solo. Now, the left hand, what I've done is I've done it like a solo piano exercise. In other words, if you're playing with a band, you wouldn't necessarily play left hand like this. I've covered the bass notes in some of the chords. You would do more comping. So I'll leave it up to you on how to figure that part out. In terms of the solo itself, let's take a look at the right hand. Let's play the first couple of lines. I'm going to play them slowly. It may not sound completely like a great solo to you now, but when it's put together, and I will jump to the grand piano in just a little bit to play it for you. But again, just let me play it through slowly and see how it sounds. Right, so let's take a look at each of the bars. The first thing you're gonna notice is that very often what I do is I think of destination notes. So in this case, the first destination note is the E flat from the C minor chord, and then we're just playing a C minor chord heading up. It's just three, five, seven, and nine. And then in order to get to the E flat, I do one of these over and under things. So under the note, then over the note, still over, under, and to the note. Get the idea? That's something that you often hear in the jazz language and something that's missing from a lot of young and inexperienced piano players. All right, so. Then when we get up to this destination note, which is the 11th of the C minor chord right here, then we're just coming down the scale in half steps like this. So just minor seconds. And then we hit the A chord or the A half diminished seventh chord. And then we're just playing the scale. And the destination note being the F sharp. And then the next destination note being the B flat. So there's the F sharp and there's the B flat. So the scale down to F sharp. And then go up to the flat nine of the D7 flat nine chord, and I'm just playing the chord, right? That's really cool. There's another one of those over and under things. First I start under, then over, then under, then to the destination chord. Down the scale. Then just an E half diminished seventh chord. One, three, five, seven. And then the destination note being the third of the A7 flat nine. Now, often what you'll see is all of these destination notes tend to be leading tones, either the third or the seventh, and then sometimes the fifth or the root. Right? And then I just do this jazzy thing, this trill thing, which is tuplet sixteenths. Now, obviously, that's like a harmonic minor scale. And then spell some chords. So I could have gone this, but instead I put this note in there, which is kind of like blues. And then E half diminished seventh.
Now, I often do this in my soloing where I'm playing like this, a chord, but preceding it with things like that. Heading to the destination note, which is the D, and then just playing the chord. Okay, let's erase all of that. And then move down to the next two lines. Keep going. I hope you're getting something from this. If you have any specific questions about anything that I'm talking about here, in other words, you want a further deeper explanation on a specific phrase, then you can certainly ask that in the comments below. All right, we're working on the F minor chord. This is something that I would do often. Jump from the third to the flat nine. You'll often hear me do that. Right, that was C minor seventh to F minor seventh, and then B minor, B, what have we got here? We've got F minor seventh. So F minor to, to E flat, okay? So that's what I often do. And you'll hear bebop players do that a lot. And then we're just doing these thirds, these, just the scale, right? Now, obviously, these last two notes, if you heard it, that's bebop. That's where the language comes from. Again, we're just spelling the chord here, spelling the chord here, and then doing bebop to this point and adding a note on the end. So it would be bebop without that last note. Got it? Let's erase all that. Move on to the next line. Now we've got this E half diminished seventh chord where we've got this five tuplet thing. You'll hear jazz piano players do that a lot, especially Oscar Peterson. Destination note being the A, and so we're just doing this over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. It's just we're not surrounding the note immediately. We're playing more notes from the chord, which is A7 flat 9. Makes sense, right? And then a grace note heading into the D7. You can also put a D up there as well, which is hidden by my scribbling, so it's already there. So you've got, you're just sliding in, so first finger, sorry, second finger, third finger, sliding. And this is just like blues here. And we're just really sticking to the D minor blues scale. And you're wondering, hey, how come we're doing blues on D minor? It's because of that D minor chord, but it also works over B flat seven as well. Let's move on to the E half diminished seventh. So going down the scale, Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's move on to the next line. And then what I've got is a couple of chords getting into the bridge. So the bridge starts on the A half diminished seventh chord. So often we'll just take a little break from playing eighth notes or phrases and just play some chords. 
and then get back into the soloing here. Nice little tuplet. This is all over, over, over destination note. D minor, uh, sorry, D7 flat nine. Right? Now, to put the F sharp as a passing note to the root of a minor chord is something that you'll often hear me do. We had it a little bit earlier in this tune, but I just wanted to point it out again. Right, we did this before. It's very often that you would put the major seventh on a minor seventh chord as a passing note. Play that line again. Now I do want to point out right now that it's important to always accent the end of each of these notes because it's going to be a lot more swing when you do that. Otherwise it sounds swinging backwards. This would be swinging backwards. rather than this. It's not just accented, but it's held longer. Because if you just jump through it, it sounds more like this, where you've got a dotted quarter and a 16th note, like that, or sorry, a dotted eighth and a 16th. But it's more like this, where you've got a triplet feel like this with the accent, of course, on this note. Grab the next line. Now we've got, again, another one of those five tuplet things. This is interesting, just under, over, under, destination note. Again, that's really part of that bebop language. And then continuing on the A7 flat nine, spelling the chord, right? A7 flat nine. Bebop. The, these notes are just passing notes. You'll often hear that where you've got starting on the seventh of the chord and then going down in half steps. Because that's really just part of the bebop scale for G7. So. Spelling the chord on C minor. And there's that flat nine on the D7 chord. Down to the next line. So we're getting down to the last two lines. And now we've got blues. This is just passing notes heading to this destination note. The rest is just blues scale. Again, we've got another one of those riffs, except now it's just only 16th notes instead of a five tuplet. And then over, under, destination note. Heading to the fifth of the C minor chord. All right, let's erase that and play it. And 
And I played an F major chord here or an F dominant chord where the F minor should be, but it should be F minor. So one more time. And that's the solo over Whisper Not. If you have any questions about it, again, you can mark them below. I'm gonna jump over to the grand piano now and play the solo there, just so you can hear it in its entirety. And then I'm gonna post a link to the sheet music, so stick around for that. Thanks for hanging out with me for another one of my tutorials. I really appreciate it. I'm going to post a link as promised to the sheet music of this transcription for the solo on Whisper Not up here in the corner. And if you're looking for another challenge, I've put a transcription together of me playing the head to Whisper Not. It's a nice arrangement where I've put the left hand and the right hand together in a solo piano transcription. You can find that video and complete tutorial right here.